Good morning. We welcome you in Jesus' name to his Father's house of prayer as we gather on the third Sunday of the Easter season. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we're blessed to have Pastor Dave Mertz, the president of our Great Plains Lutheran High School, uh, sharing God's word with us today. He will also lead our Bible study. The path of worship that we'll be using has been printed out for you. Uh, it, is, it is a varied offer of uh, page 154 in the front of the blue hymnal. You can also choose to follow along there. For example, we will not sing the Gloria that is in the hymnal, but we have a hymn stanza that we'll be using to replace that instead. We turn now to our opening hymn as we celebrate the Easter season, Jesus Lives, the Victories Won. We invite you to stand for the final stanza of that hymn. May God bless our worship today. worship continues on page three of your service bulletin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. 
Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart, and I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray. God, have mercy on me, a sinner. <coughs> Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. peace from above and for our salvation let us pray to the Lord for the peace of the whole world for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all let us pray to the Lord this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise let us pray to the Lord help save comfort and defend us gracious Lord In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord by joining us sing stanza two of hymn 608. Be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have committed to your church the task of making disciples of all nations. Enlighten with your wisdom those who teach and those who learn, that rejoicing in the knowledge of your truth, they may worship and serve you from generation to generation. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Special lessons have been chosen for our Great Plains Sunday. The first reading is from Paul's letter to the believers in the congregation at Rome, chapter 8, verses 31 through 39. It's printed for you on page 5 of your service folder. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will we not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those who God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No. 
In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm of the day is psalm number 78. People of the Lord, we will sing this psalm together. Second lesson written to the young pastor Timothy, the second letter that Paul sent to him, chapter 1, the first 14 verses we read. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, in keeping with the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dear son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father in Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve as my ancestors did with a clear conscience as day and night I constantly remember you in my prayers. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For the spirit for the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, self-discipline. So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me as prisoner. Rather, join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. He has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. 
This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And of this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That is why I am suffering as I am. Yet this is no cause for shame, because I know whom I have believed, and I'm convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day. What you have heard from me keep as the pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Guard the good posit that is entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand as I read the verse of the day. Alleluia, for Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all. Therefore all died. And he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. Alleluia. The gospel of our Lord is recorded for us in John chapter 20, beginning at verse 19. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet had believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written, that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. We invite the congregation to be seated and invite any children who would like to come forward at this time for a children's message. After that message, we will sing the hymn of the day, hymn 757, Gracious Savior, Gentle Shepherd. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for coming up here this morning. I noticed that uh, none of you crawled up here this morning. Why is that? Why didn't you crawl up here? You didn't crawl up. What did you do? Did you walk? Okay, you know, kind of a dumb question, yeah. We didn't crawl up here because we can walk, right? But I don't know if you remember how you learned to walk. For some of you, maybe it wasn't all that long ago. But I just need to think about that for a minute this morning. How children learn to walk. And there's a picture that you can look at. I think it's going to come up here. Or maybe not. But if you can, picture in your mind a child learning to walk. There's one on the left there. You can see him. And maybe, that's, maybe you remember it. Maybe you don't remember it. But that's how it worked. Somebody, and I had a grandson not too long ago that was learning how to walk. And we would take him, we would hold him by the arms. And we would more or less carry him because he couldn't stand on his own. And we would kind of shuffle him along, maybe even kind of twist his body so one foot would go in front of the other. And then gradually, he would start to take steps. And maybe you've seen this. 
Have you seen a young child? Maybe they'll crawl over to a coffee table or to a chair or to a couch, and then they'll walk along that for a while. And that's what happened with our grandson. And then he would take a couple of steps, and he would topple over. And then he would do it again. He'd crawl over. He'd climb up. He'd take a couple of steps, and he would topple over. And he did it again and again and again until finally he could take a few more steps. And now he's walking all over the place like you guys, and he's even starting to run around a little bit. But that's how it works. Somebody helps you. They help you a lot in the beginning. Maybe in the very beginning they do it for you, but then they help you a lot, and then you would do a little bit more on your own and a little bit more until you are walking. And now you walked up here this morning, right? You didn't even think about crawling up here. You walked up here, and you walk all sorts of places every day, day after day after day. I'll do one more question. Do you all know your ABCs? you all know your alphabet? Can you go all the way from A to Z? Or maybe you can only do part of it right now. But that works the same way, right? First of all, somebody, an adult, maybe likely your parents, maybe grandparents, maybe other family members, maybe somebody who loves you and cares about you helps you. Maybe they do it for you at first. They say the whole alphabet. Then they do it with you. Maybe it's just A, B, C. And then it's already up to D and E and F until finally you can do the whole alphabet all by yourself. And then you use that, those A, B, Cs every day. And I'm mentioning those things because this is what I want you to remember. The same thing is true about God's word and using God's word. At the beginning, when we are younger, people, in a way, they do it for us, right? Maybe there's people who take you up on their lap and they read Bible stories to you. They tell you what Jesus has done for you. They tell you that Jesus lived for you, that Jesus died for you, that Jesus paid for all of your sins, that he rose again on Easter, that he is alive and he's your Savior and loving God every single day. And then you start to do that on your own, and you can read it on your own, together with people, until finally, you can do this all by yourself. Day after day after day, you can continue to read and learn and grow and study God's Word. It's just like learning how to walk or learning how to do your ABCs. People help you along the way until you can do it on your own, and then you continue to do it day after day after day. And there's one more thing about, about walking or about God's word that I want you to remember. Even when you can do it on your own, even when you can do it all by yourself, sometimes it's good to do it together. It's good to walk together with other people, to enjoy things together with other people, whether that's walking, using your, your alphabet to, to talk and to communicate, or to study God's word, to learn and grow in God's word, just like we are doing today. In the Bible reading, you're going to hear a word called continue. In other words, keep on. Keep on learning. Keep on growing. Keep on studying God's word. And that's our encouragement for you and your families today. Thank you for coming up this morning. You can head on back, and we'll continue with our hymn of the day.
Grace and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God for our meditation this morning is also from a letter of St. Paul to Timothy, his second letter, chapter 3, verses 10 through 17. But you have faithfully followed my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, my faith, my patience, my love, my steadfast endurance, my persecutions, my sufferings, the kind of things that happened to me in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra, the kind of persecutions I endured. And the Lord rescued me from all of them. Indeed, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, while evil people and impostors will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. As for you, continue in the things you have learned and about which you have become convinced. You know from whom you learned them. And that from infancy you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, and for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be complete, well-equipped for every good work. This is the word of the Lord, and we pray. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Dear friends, in the name of our Savior, Jesus. I don't know if this is true for you personally, but I think it tends to be true generally. Why do useless, trivial things stick in our minds while much more important things tend to slip away? Why do I remember things like what I'll call silly Bible trivia for the avid outdoorsman? Where is baseball mentioned in the Bible? In the beginning. Where is tennis mentioned in the Bible? When Joseph served in Pharaoh's court. What did Noah say to his sons when they were fishing off of the ark? Go easy on the bait, boys. We only have two worms. Why do I remember such things? and yet struggle to remember much more important things. For example, this winter I was happy that one of our pastors preached on the, the scripture reading from Romans chapter 11 because as I was in the congregation listening to that reading, hearing that the reading said that the, the Gentiles received mercy because of the Jews' disobedience, I'm wondering, wouldn't the Gentiles have received mercy even without the Jews' disobedience? What is St. Paul saying here? How do these things fit together? And why don't I have a better understanding? Why can't I come up with a... a clear, concise explanation on the spot. I've studied these things before. Well, at least part of the reason is because I haven't worked at it. Remembering things takes work. Making things permanent takes work. It takes work and continued repetition. And I think that's one of the reasons why St. Paul wrote to Timothy and writes also for us Continue in the things that you have learned and about which you have become convinced. When you don't use things, you lose things. So let's think about why it is so important and how we can continue in the things that we have learned. And the context here is not useless, punny trivia, nor is it the weather or sports statistics or the economy those things have their time and their place. But, but here and now, we're talking about things that are more important, always important, eternally important. The context here is Scripture, Holy Scripture, all of Scripture. Why is it so important that you continue in the things that you have learned from the Bible, the things about which God's Word has convinced you? Listen again to what St. Paul says about the Christian life. You have faithfully followed my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, my faith, my patience, my love, my steadfast endurance, my persecutions, my sufferings, the kind that happened to me in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra, the kind of persecutions I endured. And the Lord rescued me from all of them. Indeed, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted while evil people and impostors will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. 
Indeed, Paul says, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. St. Paul was persecuted. He mentions three cities, Iconium, Lystra, Antioch, three stops on his first missionary journey. When he went to Antioch, there were people there who, who became jealous of him, who mocked him, who ridiculed him, who cast him out of their city. When he went on to Iconium, there were those who were rejecting the message, who were trying to poison the minds of those who, who were listening. And they too tried to stir up and even lead the people to stone him. So he went on to Lystra. And then while he was there, people from those first two cities came, agitators came, they stirred up the people, and they in fact convinced them to stone Paul. And they dragged him out of the city, and they left him for dead. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, St. Paul recites this litany of hardship, of, of persecution. He says, Five times I received from the Jews the forty lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. One time I was stoned. I have been in danger from robbers, in danger from my own people, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the wilderness, in danger on the sea, in danger among false brothers. I have worked hard and struggled. I've spent many sleepless nights. I've been hungry and thirsty. I've gone without food many times. I've been cold and lack clothing. No doubt, St. Paul was persecuted. And how about you? Have you been persecuted for your faith in Jesus Christ? Persecution is not a thing of the past. If you do a quick internet search for Christian persecution, there's all sorts of references that are going to come up. And when I tried that, among the, the first ones that came up were several that came from an organization called Open Doors. According to Open Doors 2023 World Watch List, more than 360 million Christians around the world suffer persecution and discrimination on a regular basis. According to the Pew Research Center, Christianity is opposed in more nations, in more countries than any other religious belief. According to Open Doors, the number of countries in which they rate Christian persecution as high or extreme has nearly doubled in the last 30 years. Open Doors defines Christian persecution as any hostility experienced as a result of proclaiming the name of Jesus. And they point out that that hostility, that opposition, can, can take different forms for those millions of people who are suffering. it. For some, it can mean rejection and isolation from family, from friends, and from their community. For some, it can mean being denied the basic needs of water and food and health care. And for still others, it can mean violent abuse and imprisonment and even death. And I suppose you could say, I haven't experienced any of those things. And yet consider this. I think that our society is drifting. Now you can argue that there's nothing new under the sun, and yet I think we are drifting from a, from a yes but society to a no and society. And what I mean is this. I think in the past, when, when you lived your faith and tried to put God's word into practice in your lives, you may have heard things like this. Yes, I, I know that's what the Bible says. Yes, I know that's what God wants. Yes, I know that's the right thing to do. But in this case, I'm going to do what I feel like doing. I think in a way we have moved from that to no and. No, I don't care what some book says. No. That's wrong. No, you are wrong. And you are a bigot and a phobe if you continue to cling to such things. Society has drifted. Presenting things as acceptable leads to perceiving things as acceptable. And perceiving things as acceptable leads to acceptance. In many ways, our society has accepted ungodly thinking to the point that godly living has become unacceptable. And so if you do that, if you cling to your faith, if you continue in that word and strive to live it in your lives, you're going to face whatever you want to call it. Hostility, 
ridicule, hardship, persecution. And so are your children. And so are your grandchildren. And so are the children of God's church. When speaking about the end times, Jesus said, At that time many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. As much as we would like to leave this world a better place, it's not going to get better. It's not going to get easier. St. Paul put it this way. Evil people and imposters will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. He says, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. But all is not doom and gloom. When St. Paul spoke about these things, when he spoke about his hardships, when he spoke about his persecutions, he also said, the Lord rescued me from all of them. I'm convinced that there were times when, when the Lord put a hedge around Paul, when he kept these things from coming his way, hardships and persecutions. But obviously there were times when God allowed them to come. But in each and every case, St. Paul reminds us, the Lord brought me through. And isn't the same thing true today? I think, I'm convinced there are times when God says to the devil, when God says to those who serve the devil, no, not this one, not this time, not today, not in this way. And yet there are also times when God allows these hardships to come into our lives. But just as he did for all, the Lord brings us through. The Lord brings you through. And the question is how? So listen once more as St. Paul talks about how. As for you, continue in the things you have learned and about which you have become convinced. You know from whom you learned them and that from infancy you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, and for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be complete, well-equipped for every good work. Continue in the things that you have learned and about which you have become convinced. And again, the context here is Scripture. It is God's Word. Continue in the things that you have learned from God's Word, whether you learned them from infancy or came into contact with them later in life. Resist the temptation to neglect them or to think that, that they're not needed. Maybe that they're okay or, or good for the young, but not so important when we get older. Resist the temptation to neglect God's word and go back to it. Continue in it again and again and again. As you do, remember, remember that they make you wise for salvation, these words. They make you wise for salvation because it's all about Christ. From beginning to end, the scriptures are about Christ. They are about God's plan to overcome sin, death, and the power of the devil by the sending of his son and about Jesus' fulfillment of that plan through his perfect life and his innocent suffering and death. And that completed work of Christ leads to the faith in Christ by which you are saved. And in that faith, you are convinced. You are convinced that Jesus died for your sins and for the sins of the world. You are convinced that your sins are forgiven. You are convinced that there is peace between you and a holy God. You are convinced that this world and this life is temporary. You are convinced that heaven is your home. You are convinced that God will never leave you or forsake you. You are convinced that he will make everything work out for your eternal good. You are convinced. And that conviction leads to the desire to glorify God, to honor him in your life in the things that you say, and the things that you do. And scripture equips you for that too. Because it comes from God, it is useful. It is useful in making you wise for salvation. It is useful for teaching. 
Scripture shows you who God is, what he has done, what he has said, what he wants you to know. It is useful for rebuking. Scripture tells you when you have gone astray, when you have gotten off the path, when you are wrong, when you are living outside the word and the will of God. And it's useful for correcting. Scripture shows you the way back to the path the way back to God. It provides that needed 5 degree or 10 degree or 180 degree correction. It's useful for training in righteousness. Scripture shows you how you can eat spiritually, how you can stretch spiritually, how you can exercise spiritually, how you can breathe spiritually. These are the kinds of things that happen in confessional Christian homes and confessional Christian churches and confessional Christian schools. These are the kinds of things that happen in schools like Our Savior Lutheran School and Great Plains Lutheran High School. These are the things that bring you through the challenges of this life to eternal life. These are the things that make you complete in Christ, well-equipped, for every good work. As you think about the source and the importance and the impact of Scripture, think about those from whom you learned it. Who's on your list? As we heard this morning, St. Saint, Saint Paul reminded Timothy that his list included his grandmother Lois and his mother Eunice. Who's on your list? Probably parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, other family members, pastors, teachers, friends, maybe some people whose name you don't even remember anymore. But think about those people. Think about those people who shared God's word with you and, and say a prayer of thanks to God. Thank God for those people who shared that gospel message with you. And then... And then be someone for whom future generations give thanks. Be someone that, that others, that future generations think about and remember. I remember. I remember when she took me up on her lap and, and read those Bible stories to me. I remember when he sang the truths of God's word, first for me and then with me. I remember when he comforted me with the gospel. I remember when she lifted me up with messages of, of forgiveness and peace in Jesus. I remember when he called me out and when he reassured me with the promises of God. I remember. Be someone for whom future generations give thanks. Continue in the things you have learned. Understanding that persecution comes. Convinced that scripture overcomes. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of God which surpasses all of our understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Having heard the word of our God, we now have opportunity to confess our Christian faith together. This morning we use the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Our worship now continues as we pray responsively the prayer of the church on page nine of your service bulletin. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks for the opportunities you give us each day to grow in your holy word, where we find assurance of forgiveness and your constant presence in a world which often opposes your word and will, and, strength, and we ask you to strengthen the faith of your people that we may courageously rise to every challenge and stand with you, convinced you are the rock of our salvation. Ascended Savior, Ascended Savior, you have commanded us to instruct the young in your saving truth. Bless the schools of our church and all other agencies through which we work together to carry out that vital task. Give wisdom to those who teach and attentive ears and eager hearts to those who learn. Empower our missionaries to speak the truth boldly and lead us to support their work with prayers and offerings. Jesus, it is your will that believers continue to grow in grace and knowledge throughout their lives. Fill the members of this congregation with a deep love for your word and a desire to hear and learn it. Use our worship and Bible classes together with every opportunity to study the scriptures as workshops of your Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, we live in a world full of sin. The results are illness, injuries, accidents, and our day-to-day -day lives. We come before you today seeking your healing hand for Darlene and Naomi, Gladys, Robert, Connie, Dawn, and Helena. As they continue to recover from surgery or injury or a stroke, we ask that you bless therapy and treatment they may be receiving. Give wisdom to the medical professionals caring for them. Lord, you know exactly what each of them as individuals need because you know the very hairs of the, on their heads, and you have redeemed them both body and soul with your holy precious blood. As Gina continues to fight with kidney issues, we pray that a resolution for her might be possible. As she awaits a probable transplant, we ask that you would use her current kidneys to continue to filter toxins from her body. Give relief according to your will to all who are dealing with cancer and its effects in their lives. We think of Judy and Dean and Ann, Delbert, Carol and Patty, Grant faith and strength to trust your will for their lives here on earth and for the life that awaits them as your children in heaven. Dear Savior, we implore you to turn the hearts of those who have wandered from the faith and to strengthen those in doubt, mercifully touch their lives and restore them, that they may once again take pleasure in your word, which alone can make them wise for salvation. Cause the gospel of salvation to revive and refresh all nations. Let your good news be proclaimed to every people and language, that they may be gathered into your kingdom and confess you as Lord. In all these things, hear us for your mercy's sake. Amen. Our worship of our Savior continues as an offering is received. While that offering is being gathered, we ask that you would find one of the Maroon Friendship Registers. Please sign it, pass it down to the people seated around you. Following the service, take a moment to greet one another.
worship continues on the middle of page 10. The Lord be truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who by his willing sacrifice on the cross took away the sins of the world and by his glorious resurrection restored everlasting life. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. We give thanks to you, O God, through your dear Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent to be our Savior, our Redeemer, and the Messenger of your grace. Through him you have made all things, in him you are well pleased. He is the incarnate Word, conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. To fulfill your promises, he stretched out his hands on the cross and released from eternal death all who believe in you. As we remember Jesus' death and resurrection, we thank you that you have gathered us together to receive your Son's body and blood. Send us your spirit, unite us as one, and strengthen our faith so that we may praise you and your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we glorify and honor you, O God, our Father, with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. O Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. O Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy. This time we invite the communicant members of our Savior Lutheran Church of other Wisconsin Synod congregations to come forward at the direction of the ushers 
to receive the body and blood of Jesus. During the distribution, hymn 456 will be available for singing. Come for all things are now ready.
and Savior strengthens and keeps you in Christian faith, life everlasting. Go in peace, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Please stand, we speak responsively the words of thanksgiving on the top of page 12. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we pray. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this saving gift. We pray that through it, you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever, amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace, amen. Congregation may be seated. We close our service by joining us sing stanzas four and five of hymn seven. 58.
Good morning. Thank you for all who have worshiped with us today, our college students and guests. Uh, thanks for joining us, those watching online. Thank you for joining us for that venue. If you did watch online, please go to our website and sign our worship attendance form. We thank Pastor Mertz, the president of our Great Plains Lutheran High School, for sharing God's word of encouragement for us to continue in those holy scriptures. A door offering will be received for our Great Plains High School. Sunday school and Bible class will follow this morning. Pastor Mertz will be making a presentation in the adult Bible class today. And he also has a couple uh, words that he would like to share before I make the rest of the announcements at this time. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be with you this morning. One of the things we enjoy doing is getting out and about and worshiping with God's people in different places. Gives me an opportunity to bring you greetings from Great Plains Lutheran High School and also to say thank you. Thank you for your support of our ministry in all of its various different forms and ways. I trust that you're keeping up to date through various uh, printed updates and things like that. Um, there is a table out front where we, we put a few things. If there's something there that you can use, whether it's a pen or a pencil or a lip balm or whatever, please help yourself to that and make use of that. And uh, I'll do it with this request that maybe as you're making use of those things and notice that it says Great Plains Lutheran High School on there, that you might say a prayer for Christian education, that you might say a prayer for our ministry at GPL. That is much appreciated. And if you are not receiving things, for example, by mail or email and would like to, there's a contact card on that table also that you can fill out. Just a couple of quick highlights. God's blessing us this year with our a record enrollment of 137. That includes 40 freshmen. That's the largest single class that we've ever had. It's now enrollment time for next year, looking like we'll probably have a freshman class in the 30s next year, and God's blessing us along the way in a lot of different ways. Making use of new facilities, you may have already heard or soon will hear about our, our plan to continue that with a four-classroom addition that, Lord willing, if our plans mesh with God's plans, by this time next year we'll be making use of those four new classrooms. So we're excited about that as well. We're also excited that, that uh, principal, Mr. Ryan, excuse me, Kyle Bender, has accepted our call to, to serve as our next principal. We're looking forward to having him serve us and leading us forth uh, as, as that role of, of principal and leader. I think those are just a couple of things that I wanted to mention. Again, you can stay up to date, and we appreciate that you do that, and, and we wish you God's blessings. God's blessings as you continue in the word that he's given to you. Continue in it in your homes, through your congregation, and through our schools. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. Thank you. Just a couple of other announcements. Uh, eighth graders will be meeting this week for confirmation from 6.30 to 7.30 to practice examination. Uh, Little Lambs has resumed, so if you have someone who would fit that uh, age group, we invite them to join us on Friday. Super Saturday resumes this Saturday. If you still want to join that class, please reach out to me. One of our male college students is looking for a place to stay for the summer. There's information in the bulletin. Please contact me if you might be able to help with that. And next week is Phil the Pew Sunday. We're serving pizza and ice cream following church, so we encourage you to consider inviting a friend or a family member uh, for join you for worship and, and that free meal afterwards. We just ask you to sign up by Friday if you are planning to come. College Bible study Wednesday at 8.15 at the Student Center. Other announcements are in the bulletin. As you leave, please throw out the top sheet of the friendship pad. A thought for the week. The Bible itself never suffers when someone neglects it. But if someone neglects the message of the Bible, they will suffer. God's blessings this new week of grace. Mm -hmm.